guys. That's our reaction to whatever happens to the Closure with his dad. Everyone just needs some therapy and you become gods. Why can't that happen in real life? Mia, the Lord of Darkness just became our roommate! That's a great title for a light novel. Hang on, let me jot that down. That's up there with the Devil's Apart-Timer. They fight the Serpentine to save Lloyd, so he's all right now. I can't get over the fact that Kai's true potential was unlocked when he decided to save an actual person over a weapon. I mean, like, I get it, the Fang Blade un unleashed the end of the world, but also his big character development is to value human life. You could argue he's valuing human life more by keeping the world from ending, but I get it, he was being selfish. It's just, I feel like there's a few ways you can interpret this. Kai and Zane's true potential were more interesting than Cole and Jay, that's for sure. Why do you have four arms? How did you discover the key to unlocking your powers? I wanted the Fang Blade so badly to prove I was good enough to become the Green Ninja. All of my training to become the best ninja wasn't in preparation to become the Green Ninja. It was... To protect him. They finally figure out the obvious. Listen, I don't like this. I don't like Chosen One stories. He doesn't have a stake in this. Lloyd doesn't necessarily want this. I mean, it's cool that son must face father, but again, it's just the prophecy said so, and not any actual person motivation for it, and it makes it feel empty. But I never had that choice. Because I was bitten. But you still have a choice. Your uncle has a plan for you. And even though it may be to stop me one day, we have to follow our own destiny. Okay, wow. Garmadon is actually a good dad. Lloyd doesn't care. His dad is still evil and wants to take over the world. So he says, haha, screw you. You suck. Can't blame him. I would do it too if I was in his position. Another no Your spin jitsu may be powerful. Demo. Uredo. But the blade is more honorable. Bato Jutes! Get Fast Heartburn Relief on the go with Tomlins. Fixation soup, Brian's Elevel. The ninjas steal all of the fang blades from Pythor, but it was too easy. Pretty sure Pythor is up to something. Evident by him on their ship, they go to Mount Doom to throw the fang blades into it in order to destroy them. And oh my goodness, how many tropes are they going to smash into the show? At this point, I want to see how many I can point out. Take a drink when they make a reference. Pythor gets the blades bla back. Not sure why he bothered going through all this trouble. Okay, quick, quick right. They have the Tornado of Creation. Why don't they use it more? Can't they just whip up whatever they want at any time? Heck, they could just make a new house, couldn't they? I feel like they aren't getting creative, which is kind of the entire point of Lego. He awakens the Great Devourer, and Wu is trying to keep Pythor there so to get eaten, even if it means getting eaten with him. Because apparently he, Wu had a vision, he, he was going to die. Boss battle time, baby! <laughs> I can't tell if he died or if he just did an Obi-Wan Kenobi and poofed out of there. Speaking of making new homes, their boat home gets trashed, and I mean, I'm just gonna say, I'm saying, you could just magic tornado up a new one, a new home, for a, new, a new Lego set for us to buy, and it wouldn't even be hard. Did the writers realize how powerful the power of creation is? Oh, wait, they probably did and are choosing not to use it. That probably makes sense. Zane, do you still have a recording of a sacred flute in your memory bank? But I have its exact tone recorded and ready for playback. Maybe we need to update Zane's speakers because yikes, I have headphones from 2001 that sound better than that. Tornado of creation, and he got better speakers. Amazing, I love it. That was supposed to be a joke, but I'm fine with it. Also, random, their dragons are back and they morph together. How convenient, we have Lego Tiamat. Hey, didn't they used to have dragons? Oh yeah. They give Garmadon all of the golden weapons because they can't figure out how else to beat the Devourer, and so now that's gonna be a whole other issue, but hey, I can't blame them. If a guy says that he can wield all four weapons and can stop a monster from eating the world, I wouldn't care that he also wants to take over the world. A world taken over is better than a world eaten. Honestly, this makes sense. Garmadon is getting his revenge against the snake that turned him evil and took away his agency in life. Technically, that thing is the reason there's a rift between him and his son, and it's satisfying. Not very satisfying, but good enough. Oh, hey, Ganda! I mean, uh, Sensei Wu is alright! What a relief! 
Season one was okay. It was very for kids. And with all that praise being given to the show, I was expecting more. Now I know the really good stuff is apparently beyond the first couple seasons, but the first several seasons hold a very special place in a lot of people's hearts, so it felt wrong just not covering them. I had to grade season one, it's a C. Feels like they had an idea, they wanted, they experimented with some things, they put it together pretty well, but I still can't get over the lack of real motivation for the characters. The plot is so simple, it's a little insulting, even for kids. The first season was really bogged down by having to establish all the new villains and characters, which, very common for first seasons. You know, I'm not really, I'm not really too upset with this. I have no doubt, so long as they don't introduce more villains and characters in the next season, or at least a lot, as many as they did in this season, that it's only gonna get better in season two. So let's check out season two. Garmadon goes to take control of the remaining Serpentine and offers a team-up, which, I mean, I guess they hate Pythor more than they hate him, so it's the lesser of the two evils. Whoa, evil boat! Oh, yeah, he has the power of creation. Oops. But by getting rid of Sensei Wu, Lloyd will never reach his full potential. No, no they're still holding on! Let go! New house, or shack, basement, whatever. The city is rough, even in Ninjago. Wait! I have an idea on how to get new golden weapons. Don't worry, bring them over here, I got you. I got you guys. Garmadon puts the gold weapons into a gold ball at the gold peaks and makes the ultimate gold weapon of ultimate gold power or something, I don't know, it's something bad. But Sensei Wu, if we don't have our golden weapons, how will we get back our elemental powers? The power was inside you all along. Go on this massive quest to discover more godlike powers. <laughs> I fear there is a great disturbance in the Force. During Lloyd's training, they figure out that Lloyd can mimic the power of the Golden Weapons, and he has the ability to harness all of the elemental powers, thus the coolness of the Green Ninja. Oh my goodness, he's the Avatar. That weird staff has the power of creation, so now he can make anything he wants, but only once a day since it drains so much of his power. Which, I'm sure Garmadon isn't going to properly use it, just make a clone of yourself, or summon an army. Or make an army of dragons. Or make a copy of the staff. I don't know, something. Uh, guys, meet Brad Tudabone. Such a- Ha! <laughs> That's the first joke in this show that it's gotten me to audibly laugh. Season 2 is looking up. The beginning of Season 2 is actually really fun. It focuses more on the fun quirkiness that LEGO properties usually have, and it focuses on Lloyd slowly developing his skills, making him develop from a boring, uninteresting, annoying little twerp to a kid that's slowly coming into his own, and maybe you can root for him a little bit. So far, if you're going to watch Ninjago for the first time, I'd recommend starting with Season 2, or at least skipping Season 1, or just watch my video and start where I left off. Whatever works, they get their shit back, don't worry. Behold, Dromasaurid Theropod Grundalicus, otherwise known as the Grundle. <sighs> they really just let that one pass the editors, didn't they? I'd like to think yeah. the writers knew exactly what they were doing. Rise, you know, Garmadon, if you're really having trouble getting your Grundle to rise, there's a pill for that. Mother Doomsday. Well, if it isn't Lord Hemroid Garmadon. I'm sorry, did he say Lloyd Hemroid Garmadon? I mean, I heard you can get those when giving birth, but naming him after it? That's low. They get turned into little kids, and they get an aging potion to turn them back, and also to age this monster into a fossil. But then Lloyd ages too, now he's not a kid, which is honestly messed up. He missed out on his childhood. He's still mentally a kid though, what the heck? This has to screw up his development so bad. Why do you guys need to do this? I'm upset with how this isn't happening. I was hoping for them to have Lloyd slowly age throughout the seasons. Wait, he's wearing green. Link wears green. Is this actually supposed to be a Legend of Zelda reference? Speaking of references, they travel back in time and we got the Back to the Future reference. Oh my god, the writers are all a bunch of nerds, and I love it. And you'd think they'd go back in time to get their old gold weapons back. Wrong! They use them to destroy the mega staff that Garmadon has, which... My gosh, that would completely change the present, wouldn't it? I, I guess not. Everything looks fine. I guess now Garmadon doesn't have a wishing staff. I feel like that would have disastrous consequences. But whatever, I'll roll with it. If that's how they wanted to get rid of the mega staff of creation, it was pretty cool. I don't remember my mother. 
she abandoned me when I was really young. I spent my whole life at Darkness boarding school. I take back what I said about Garmadon being a good father. Speaking of moms, turns out Lloyd's mom just works at a museum. I was imagining something, I don't know, more, I guess. How did some random person meet the ultimate lord of all evil? I bet it was Tinder. Leave in the comments below, do you think Garmadon can pull? History lesson time! Lloyd's mom was trying to figure out how to save Garmadon, and apparently there's a new, even bigger bad guy named the Overlord. The balance of light and dark, and there's a stone army now, and this one dude literally split the continent in two. Literally a light and dark side, yin and yang. And so long as good and evil remain even, the overlord won't arise. So that's why Garmadon needs to be stopped. This sounds like it's going to just create bigger and bigger bad guys season after season, which will end up becoming a problem eventually. Oh my gosh, there's 15 seasons. What the heck have they been doing all this time? Anyway, the Storm Warriors wake up. Speaking of which, Garmadon awakens the Island of Evil because of course he does. We all saw that coming. I'm a little lost on why they would have half the season focus on Garmadon and the staff only to have it amount to nothing and switch gears to a new enemy. I actually like the idea of Garmadon battling with his unwilling desire for ultimate evil and the love of his son. It was an interesting dynamic for a villain. Now we have generic bad guy of evil. I think that this is a downgrade. More Prophecy Hootenanny, where there's a doomsday countdown clock and there's an evil helmet that gives Garmadon power, but he can't take it off without guaranteeing the countdown. And now he controls the army of the Overlord. Does he not find it suspicious that there's an evil voice giving him everything he wants? The threat of an indestructible army and pushing the ninjas to run away is engaging. It's like the tension you get from a zombie apocalypse story where there's an insurmountable odds and you're desperately trying to save everyone. This episode's really good. Why are they looking at each other like that? Oh, maybe Sensei Wu can pull. First, Sensei Wu takes Garmadon's son, and then he takes Garmadon's wife. I mean, Garmadon sucks. I'm, I, so I'm not really sure if this is crappy of him or not, but still. Look, the true power of the Green Ninja can only be unlocked when his four protectors find their own pure elemental powers. I called it! And there's... Oh my goodness, it's Zane's dad. I thought you were dead. Bonehead Samakai reviving me with a special elixir. He wanted me to create state-of-the-art war machines for their army. Okay, I was about to say this plot twist was lukewarm, but having it tie in with the whole past conflict is awesome. Heck, I even commented on their vehicles and stuff. You notice how they really just don't explain certain details? Like, why was he dying? I thought it was old age, but apparently not. Maybe it was? Is he immortal now? All of these que questions and more will not be answered in the next episode. Regardless of what I said about the new enemy, Season 2 really drives home that feeling of epicness that I missed with LEGO. Honestly, this whole episode gives me strong echoes of the days of Bionicle, where it was its own original world with a massive history and that was incredibly interesting. Even though I still prefer the tone of Bionicle, Ninjago is starting to really look up and Zane is very quickly becoming the best character in the show. I mean, my goodness. The Temple of Light. They made it, and everything they've ever done is inscribed on the walls. Is everything destiny in this show? Why do they need to worry about failing when it looks like no matter what, they'll win? Lloyd gets his super awesome godlike powers, and new armor! New gold weapons? They all got elemental swords. Are these considered the new golden weapons, or are they just considered gold weapons. Like, is this a capital G golden, or is this just gold for aesthetic? Lloyd is a god now, so that's cool. Beach episode! I I do not want LEGO fan service, guys. Holy crap, you guys are ripped. This was almost as awkward as the time I searched up LEGO in Brick Hub. Lloyd is realizing he doesn't have it in him to fight his father, which is just so dumb. Your father sucks, bro. Where's the teenage angst? Your life has sucked. You deserve this. They Grammarly Go is the only generative AI product that you need. It's easy to use in the... They tried to put the helmet of super evil back on the clock thinking to stop Doomsday, but they were too late. But literally by a few seconds, so now the world is ending, I guess. The ultimate evil weapon is another big robot tank thing. Gosh, can't wait to purchase that at my local store wherever toys are sold. Also, Nia was captured, which, like, come on, she can kick butt too. Why is she a damsel in distress? Breaks her character a little bit. Nia goes from proving that she's a cool, 
competent hero, just like the other ninjas, to being the mechanic. At least the show... At least show her mechanic. fighting a little bit. Oh, the weapon turns people evil. Mia was just to test things. Yeah, still kind of lame how they did that. I'm not upset at the weapon. I'm upset with them throwing Nia under the bus just to show the weapon's power. Now, skipping throwing Nia under the bus and just showing what happens when he fires the missile would have been better, I swear. The Overlord comes to Ninjago. Garmadon realizes he was used. Oh, he's using Garmadon as a host? Okay, that's kind of cool. I didn't see that coming. My father is still in you. He will fight with me! Lord. We do a Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, and Lloyd Ooh. loses, because screw you, the final boss hasn't reached the ultimate form yet, and we need to drag this out longer. And then they just leave. <laughs> Honestly, it's one of the few very logical things the villains have done. Did I... did I win? No. They get their own mecha robot. The comedy relief character that I didn't expect to be important grabs the helmet and now controls the stone army. Is this guy a recurring character? I'm not going back and adding him in the script. He's some dude that lets the ninja borrow his dojo. Now he has an army. They start getting corrupted because, of course, making dire situations more dire. And Lloyd has to do this alone because main character syndrome. Super epic yeah, ultimate godlike fight. He's Gone Super Saiyan! Oh my goodness, quick, get Crush 40! We need to get them to make some epic battle music for this. I'll admit, this final episode was pretty epic, even if the banter between Lloyd and the big bad guy was really bad. I mean, like, yikes. Anyway, everything is fine again. Lloyd! Garmadon? Dad? Every ounce of evil and venom is gone. So from what I gather, this is where Ninjago was supposed to to end. Obviously, they can just add a new bad guy and add a new struggle and continue the show, which they did. And I'll be covering more of that in their own video since <sighs> this video is getting pretty long. Season two was definitely better than the first. I know that I'm not really the target audience anymore. I can't really complain, but I can say that it looks like Ninjago is only set up to improve from this point onward. Now that we're all past the destiny stuff, I'm hoping we can go on to stories where the writing isn't lazy. I really wanted Lloyd to have to fight Garmadon. I figured they'd pull an avatar and just de-evil Garmadon, which happened. They said he had to defeat him. They didn't say he had to die. But that, that inner turmoil, it was taken away from us. And it's just, they had an angsty kid with too much responsibility and a bad father. How did we not get to see more inner turmoil? In season three, we can see them get older, get normal jobs, and are now in a world that's futuristic. And I'm really excited to see what happens because what I'm seeing is that they want to spread their wings and do whatever they want. The popularity of Ninjago is hard to ignore, even getting the full production music video of the ultimate opening theme song from the show. According to Mystic Gengar, the Golden Ninja episode was a cultural revolution for elementary schools at the time. And just to see how much Ninjago has changed over the years, let's take a look at the future and see what is happening in Season 15. I have no idea what's happening. Oh my goodness, Zane is full robot. It's so futuristic. Oh, the Serpentine! Oh, Sensei Wu got an upgrade. My goodness, this looks like Batman and Gotham City. Oh, wow. Okay, I think I'll keep watching Ninjago. That looks awesome. Subscribe for more Ninjago content. But I wanted to know what you guys thought of Ninjago. So here's what some of you mentioned from my YouTube community post. The fandom of this one is one of the chillest I've ever been in, at least the one on Tumblr. Also, it's always fun reminding people of the show's existence and seeing a wave of nostalgia hit them and later tell them that the show has like 15 seasons and a few more installments and is still going on. Me and my friends were obsessed with this show as kids, and we would always hang out and pretend to be the ninja at, at recess. I stopped watching around season 6, but came back a few years ago and have absolutely flabbergasted at the fact that it was still going. I recently met back up with a friend I used to watch it with, and she was shocked too. It probably would have been a good idea to end it where they originally intended for it to, but then we wouldn't have absolute bangers like Tournament of Elements and Possession, which are my favorite seasons. The Ninjago movie that came out. In 2017, irked fans as it deviates from the plot of the show. 
And by that, I mean it's not the plot of the show at all. The movie, from what I've heard, is considered non-canon, given that it was made more as an introduction to Ninjago for new fans, rather than a love letter to established fans. And this released during when Warner Brothers teamed up with LEGO to make a series of LEGO movies that were all surprisingly well-received. The Ninjago movie, however, is the lowest grossing movie of all the LEGO movies released thus far. But can you really blame them for doing what they did? I mean, we had around seven seasons prior to this movie. Trying to make a movie with that much story backing it up, while also making it palatable for people who had never seen Ninjago is really hard. I would have preferred them retelling the original story rather than completely change it. However, LEGO relied a lot on the it's the real world and this is a kid's imagination thing. And I feel like that's the real reason the movie didn't sit well with fans. The Lego movies do look pretty though. The Lego Ninjago movie is a good starting point for new fans. If you want to get interested into the Ninjago theme, definitely watch the Ninjago movie. The Ninjago movie and the TV show has some similarities, but the Ninjago movie definitely moves away from the idea of the TV show is like Spinjitsu, powers they have, the villains, etc. I knew when approaching this video there was a lot of pressure on myself. Because usually I like to cover franchises that are largely forgotten. Ninjago is not forgotten. And so there was a lot of pressure for me to figure out how to do this video right. And I'd like to thank everyone who helped me with this video, and all of you who responded to the posts I made on my social media, and all the LEGO content creators you saw throughout this video. And especially a big thank you to the entire Ninjago community for allowing me to take this glance into what Ninjago is and help me create this video for people who are outside looking in or people that are casual fans that haven't dived deep into the show. Ninjago fans go hard. I'm so glad I was reached out by Spinjitsu Master Falcon who gave me the idea of really featuring more Ninjago content creators and making this video even more of a celebration of the community. But, all that said, that's everything I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave your comments down below on what you think I should do next, what you think I got wrong, what you think I got right. Anything whatsoever. Be sure to share this video if you can. Subscribe if you want more LEGO Ninjago content coming up in the future, because I do want to review the seasons every season if I can. You know, any reason I, I need to indulge in more LEGO sets, I will take it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay beautiful and keep playing. Well, that was a funny reaction.